I proved in balance part 6 that taking an FR to full potential you have to drift it. But there is a blind spot in the theory. As much as I'd hate to admit it, this perfect rotation seems to wear our tires. Or does it? There is normal understeer. Then there is something called blocking friction. This is the worst driving sin of all time. It's when you understeer with so much angle that your front tires become friction blockers to anything that comes in its way including tarmac they're like dust pans it's a brick wall you are forming against the road you're supposed to be treading but it's not just the front tires you see the fact is that skidding the rear tires creates more tire to road friction in the wrong way grip turning with your fronts your front tires are grabbing the road tightly and throwing it behind but drifting the rears, the rears are diagonally pointing. They're not grabbing the road and throwing it behind exactly like the front saw. With the pivot of rotation so far front that there's such a big offset angle for the rear wheels to rotate around the engine, it's still rotating, but the rear tires are acting like a brake because it has blocking friction. The blocking friction is not as bad as it would be if the car was literally sideways, but I mean, it's still there. The tires, even while accelerating, I mean, it's still in that position. It's still slowing down, blocking the car from moving forward to a point. It is a fight of blocking and grabbing. Wearing out your tires. The tire is fighting against itself. It's self-destructing. You're still rotating, you're still moving towards a direction. But if you manage to accelerate enough in order to not be decelerating while you're rotating, man, your tires are going to be gone in a few because of the harsh fights of acceleration and deceleration on the same tire. Because of this blocking friction side effect, there's a really clever technique of rotation that has been adopted by very few amazingly skillful drivers. And it is called the brake drift. It's used sometimes in rally. Keiichi Tsuchiya drives with this technique sometimes. It's the same rotation we've been talking about, but your rears are absorbing the impact of the friction. You're putting the friction to good use. And the whole car is decelerating from that as you're braking and turning into the corner. No acceleration, no open throttle. You're brake drifting into the corner from entrance to mid corner, sometimes even near exit. And then you must totally slam the gas pedal at the exit. This brake drift technique is so efficient, like the transaxle rotating a Ferrari during deceleration, turning into the corner. No one can outbrake you. The Mazda RX-7 with the same way rear wheel steering works insane with this technique. Probably the best. Watch how this Kia race car did a four-wheel rotation, braking, drift. It's not perfect, but man, this is the greatest overtake of all time. This guy right beside his opponent backs out from beside him due to no room. Then he pulls off a drift entry. And for a small moment of that entry, drifting on deceleration with a perfect four-wheel rotation, can you see how the car is gravitating towards the trajectory that the car is facing? It's gravitating to the apex. The whole car just wants to go in that direction. But then he drifted a bit too much, he counter-steered. But for that key moment, oh, <laughs> you gotta adore his driving. Pushing the little Kia. There was enough rotation to pull off the move. He performed a near perfect braking drift entry. No, come on, there's gotta be another way. I gotta be able to rotate my car. There's gotta be the most efficient way to drive, rotating it around the engine, that's what you said. How can driving my S2000 the best to full potential be self-destruction? Sorry, what did you say about S2000? Don't you think there had to be a reason I say the S2000, AMG, GTR and Daytona are the best? Come on, man, I don't say things for nothing. There are levels to rotation, there are levels to blocking friction, and there are levels to tire walking, or tire grabbing, or slip angle, all the same thing. Let me explain this to you and show you how it works with the chart. The more or less angle you need to rotate the rear wheels due to engine placement, the more or less blocking friction you have. As you see, the toe has an influence on the tires, 
but this is so little and the truth is it's on purpose to keep the tires hot enough on the straights while they're not doing any cornering they're just going straight the tires are not twisting they're not compressing so there's hardly any heat they need to stay hot for the next corners coming up so that's the usefulness of toe but it gives so little blocking friction it's almost not worth mentioning the first few legends the 296 and nsx mid rear engine cars rear wheel drive so they have almost zero friction the lamborghini aventador even though it is a mid-engine car and not mid-rear as a 296 or an NSX, it has the same amount of blocking friction due to the opposing rear wheel steering that rotates the rear wheels for you. The AMG One here also, the masterpiece that I'm going to talk about in a future episode. It's also right there. They are such well thought through great balanced cars all these that i've mentioned they hardly produce blocking friction when the s2000 comes where it starts getting a little bit bad but for the s2000 it's still not bad enough to call drifting a liability proper rotation in an s2000 it works shelby daytona even better with the engine being behind the front wheels and not just behind the front axle amg gtr has opposed rear wheel steering again just like the svj to do some of that rotation for you so it's slightly better than the s2000 even but the problem comes now the 86 and the lan evo have it worst especially the evo but the engine of the 86 in the front position whereas the evo's engine is directly in front of the front axle which gives the Evo's rear wheels the largest rotation access out of all the cars we've talked about. This is what makes the S2000, Viper and Daytona simply better designed than the Evo and 86. It's more balanced. It's just plain better. The Evos and Civics and all, their tires are fighting against themselves. The whole car is self-destructing during rotation. Oh, and when you're not rotating, you're still killing your tires pulling your engine perfect rotation doesn't work for them because they are just flawed the engine placement is not listening to the tires once again it is proven where there is discord there is destruction but the truth is implementing only some attributes of rotation into your driving can still be fast it is still rotation a high lifted front to rear wheel speed ratio favoring rear wheels moving faster can act on the chassis to almost push the engine mass farther rear and make turning faster and easier on the front tires dk perfected driving an s2000 evuo and gtr with all the attributes of rotation except for the offset angle drift Part. Look at how he handles this GTR so well, but sometimes he would make short bursts of drift rotation to turn tighter and harder. DK brought these and many more cars near their limits using various attributes of rotation. In the case of the Evo, incomplete rotation around some turns might be the fastest. So is drifting faster than gripping? If you do it right, for some cars, yes, drifting is totally better drifting is one of the attributes to their full potential but if you're driving a car with the engine in front of the front axle or something then only pull off a brake drift entry by the middle of the turn i want to know that all four wheels are perfectly gripping and you're accelerating darting out of that corner like a druid of wrath here's a little driving tip for you why are you driving your s2000 during a perfect rotation while you're feeling so good about yourself but then in mid corner you realize oh i entered way too fast i'm about to slam into the wall get a higher angle drift possessing a higher level of blocking friction that will slow you down but you'll still have enough angle and you'll still be turning gravitating towards the trajectory which is the apex not ideal but better than smashing the wall the ideal way is you should have entered at the correct speed but you didn't so shame i mentioned all sorts of cars while talking about blocking friction which car has the most and which is the most balanced self-destruction and all of that but i'm sure you noticed something yeah what has been the elephant in the room for quite a while what a lamborghini is a bull not an elephant Shh. i know when it comes to blocking friction levels the mid rear engine cars the mid engine cars and the beetles are the best 
Yeah, it's the truth. With the cars that exist, which one is the best is another question. But we've been on the hustle to find out which is the best car between the NSX and the 296. Specifically just talking about the balance. Not the fact that one is an 8000 speed automatic and the other one is a 6 speed manual. Not all those details, just the balance of the Formula 1 style layout that the NSX nearly possesses, that a Carrera GT also nearly possesses compared to the Ferrari layout. Well, we're gonna have a head to head between these two. The truth is regardless of balance at the limit you are drifting even though you might not know it lol this is a tire grip chart tires at their limit have a very faint rate of slip at this point where the tires are sailing about to lose traction is the peak of grip the reason the f1 balance is king is because the little bit of offset dangle from slip there is at the absolute limit of the tires is in the margin of perfect rotation around the engine it is pure perfection when an f1 car is at the limit of adhesion for cornering the skid angle of the slipping tires is around three to six degrees it is pure perfection this is when the tires and engine listen to each other perfectly. In this way, the only limit is the lifespan of the tires. The AMG1 is a hypercar weighing in at 1695 kg, holding 1063 HP from an F1 engine mounted to the monocoque as a stress member in the mid-rear position, technically just mid-position, and electric motors. Fuel thermal efficiency is rated at 40%. There is a 7-speed sequential gearbox playing a stress member mounted between the engine and the differential, no big mess over the rear axle. Power from the engine goes 100% RWD, while the electric motors give power to the front wheels. Rear wing a little bigger than a P1's wing, front air outlets to release pressure in the wheel wells like a GT3 RS. It is perfectly balanced and with a perfect build that the limit is so high. Oh, and by objective fact, it is one of the most sexy beautiful things ever made it left the Nürburgring nowhere near full tilt to the limit under parts performance due to the electric motors not being able to give all their power for the whole lap and due to fear of too much scraping yet it got the world record smashing the GT2 RSMR by 8 seconds that is a year in piston fury maths the truth is Ferrari's build is good for what they are doing but in the higher end of racing it would not be able to keep up with the speeds and gravity forces of an F1 so final answer Ferraris are unbalanced 